I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. We guys are doing fantastic today. I got another fun video for you today, and I hope you enjoyed it. It's actually about the Yo Yang, and yes, the YY or Yo Yang, however you guys want to say it in the game. And it's uh, actually wonder it, somebody mentioned that it could be a cheap version for a small one, uh, if you want to call it that. But let's take a take a look at it and analyze it and see how powerful this uh, kind of like a radar gunbow destroyer build would be. But as before, as always, before we start, if you see uh, value in the channel, like scrap bell button below, appreciate all the support if you see something we can do better and you like something let us leave us uh, a comment below help us uh, build the algorithm and build the channel and can't thank you guys enough we're building a great community here and we're having a blast doing it at the same time all the while learning something valuable so let's get right to it. what is the yo yang yo yang is literally uh it looks identical to the gearing if you want to take a look at it a gearing kind of uh chassis uh build gun build almost identical literally the only difference is, is it has a longer re gun reload. It uses deep water torpedoes. For those of you who don't know what deep water torpedoes are, they only hit cruisers, battleships, and carriers. This only goes out to 13.5 kilometer range as opposed to 16. Now, right off the bat, gun uh, boat action right here going against a destroyer Z44. And right here, he popped smoke. Bad idea on his part because when he, if he goes in the smoke, he has nobody spotting. But fortunately, he does have someone spotting. And we also have radar active, which means he is caught in the crossfire, in the radar very deadly if you got it if you're going up against yo yang assume it's a radar build and boom splash one first blood he goes down right off the bat and he is eliminated one destroyer eliminated on this charlie side and we did exactly what we we're supposed to do as a radar dd hunter destroyer killer is eliminate the other competing destroyer that is the biggest thing you can do as a destroyer player in world of warships if you need to learn something valuable there take that lesson from me especially if you are a gunboat dd radar main where you are literally just able to uh do one of those roles right there and know your limitations and know how to eliminate that destroyer right off the bat so right there good on you so that is again we're always learning lessons about uh, how to be a good destroyer player especially in today's meta and the world so the yo yang as i talked about has those deep water torpedoes they go out to 13.5 kilometers as opposed to the gearings 16 and a half kilometers which is a lot better the only difference being is that the deep water since they only hit certain um ships they don't hit destroyers but they do have a better reaction time 4.1 seconds for the way i built it 72 knots which is pretty darn quick so very very minimal i mean as soon as you see this you literally have four seconds to do something about it so very very powerful there i also have the legendary upgrade which allows me to have uh less concealment but better gun reload and the radar lasts a lot longer as well 20 percent increase to the radar uh as well so take a look at it. here we go we're going against the venom the dreaded venom that i definitely definitely hate unfortunately we do not have our radar still on cooldown radar is still on cooldown so we will have to engage this venom one-on-one -on -one in a drive towards him. So what is the Benham? The Benham is the Fletcher that is a torpedo machine gunner. So literally pumping out torpedoes left and right all over the place like cra crazy. So we're going to have to be very careful on here. So what are my options right here? So I've already analyzed the situation. All his support is in the back. Again, I'm sorry, Benham. Your support your support stinks. Nobody's pushing with you. Look at my support. This is why games are winning today. Like on my videos I talked about right here. Let me pause this video so I can discuss this. Why are there so many blowout matches like I just talked about in my podcast? Um, literally, look at this. I have support. They don't have support. I feel bad for you, Ben. I'm, I'm sorry you were on the team like that. And I apologize. The fact that your team decided to hide in the back behind cover as if we're playing some kind of SWAT team kind of game. Anyways, look at my team. At least they got behind cover, but they pushed with me. And that's the power of what a good destroyer player does is that if you lead, you will have those that follow. If you lead by example, those will then watch your example and they will do something about it i hope that's my um my hope and my impression is and i'm always a leader i feel that that is the best way to do it and uh, i want to lead from the front so here's the problem with benham 
Benham has no support. Everybody's in the back. Everybody's in the front with me. And that is why this side is so lopsided. Now, the Benham, what he can't do, he doesn't have any radar hydro or anything. All he can do is just run away at this point. So since the cap is now ticking up, I know he has left the cap. So I know exactly where he's at. My RP, Again, why do I pick RPF? This is exactly what you need. Situational awareness. Because why? If I didn't know, if I didn't have this situational awareness right here or indication, I don't know if he went left or if he went right. Then I would have spent my time or wasting my time going in the wrong direction. I would rather not do that. I would rather go in the right direction. I could sacrifice gun reload, whatever. What point are your guns if you don't know where you're going and you have no idea where your objective is? So my objective is to hunt down this Benham. I know kind of where he's at. Since he literally left the cap, my cap is starting to tick up now. I use that situational awareness and the information. I know he's right here with the RPF indicator. Now, the question is, where does he go? Does he go left or does he go right? So let's take a look. So I'm going to go nose in at him right now. Go in, gun, see, it switches over there. I get my nose ship point or ship pointed in that direction. Oh, switches back again. So again, there might be someone else around here. So I have to nose into the, the spot right here. And now look, I'm detected by airplanes. Here's the bad thing. See, here are the machine gun torpedoes, right? He's going to launch literally eight and eight and back and forth. I got to nose into him because I'm a slim profile, harder to hit. The problem is I'm also being spotted by an aircraft. So my goal is to get inside the smoke so I do not get uh, detected anymore because God, guess what? Nobody is spotting the Benham. So his advantage now is he can shoot from the cover of smoke and he has someone spotting for him, which means I can't see him. My radar is almost on off cooldown. That's why this is a great, great ship to have for radar. The radar saves the day all the time. And the title of the video is Why Ra uh, the Why Why Yu Yang is so great and why destroyers will win the game because of situations like this where you are going out there taking the fight to the enemy and eliminating all the bad players out there, which are the destroyers. I, I personally be uh, uh, believe that if you eliminate all the destroyers, the probability of your team winning goes drastically up. So that is our goal. That is our objective. Okay. So here we go. We're gonna to try to get inside the smoke. We dodge the torpedoes there. See, he's already firing. So he's smart on him because he has the advantage right now. I'm in the smoke, he has no cover, and guess what? There goes my radar. Now the tables have turned. Now I have the advantage. He has nobody spotting for him. And now I can just, the, uh, look at the gun reload on the uh, Yo -Yo -Y -Y Yo Yang uh, upgrade. Uh, legendary upgrade here, 2.8 second reload. Very, very good because it's in smoke. And again, our commander also allows us, if we get the uh, combat scout, it increases by another, uh, percentage while well. there it is splash two second destroyer eliminated from the game as well what i would just uh, mention there before we kill that guy was uh, our commander if he gets combat combat scout it reduces the gun reload even further uh, i don't remember off the top of my head what that is i think it's about 20 to 30 percent ish uh, around that time uh, uh that number right there either way it's a great number. I mean, to get Combat Scout and get that reload, I'm trying to get it in the Yo Yang, would be incredible. You're literally getting down to like daring reloads and maybe Lucian reloads potentially around the two second time frame. That's pretty darn good right there. All right, so we're getting radar right now. Good destroyer player, no situational awareness. Okay, so the RPF is indicating someone is in front of that Stalingrad because it's not pointing at him. Now it's pointing at him. So that means there's something either in front of him or something to the side or approximately around the same distance. So we're going to keep our eye on that. Something laid this smoke. So that means we have a threat in that smoke. So, I mean, Stalingrads don't have smoke. A destroyer has smoke. So something is in there. We got to keep our eye on. I noticed the mini map is telling me, and again, this, the replay doesn't show the smoke clouds are on the mini map as well. So I got a rough gauge as to what the distance is. If you don't know how I gauge distance, I kind of use these rings that are for distance. For example, the 7.5 as my radar uh, distance. So I use that to spot, okay, something is about 7.5 there. I use my gun rings. So 11.9, I know that it's approximately along 11.9 and so forth. So you can definitely use the rings on the mini map. Again, I encourage you to to expand the mini map so you can see a lot better and have better situation awareness and also no gauge distances so you can understand concealment you can understand positioning you can understand where position uh, uh enemy ships are at so it gives you a very very good uh information uh for any kind of situation as well for your ship and for and, and where you are needed for quick reaction so right now where am i needed right now there's something capping this thing, as you can tell by right now. The capturing is stopped because somebody is inside the cap right now, and I believe RPF is indicating something is behind this island right here, as it is indicating on the mini map. So we're going to go ahead and try to eliminate that other player as well, and I believe it's a destroyer, but he's got to be, right? So let's see, right? Uh, he's in front of me. Should Oh, there he is. So it's a Velos. All right, so Velos tier 9. I'm not too afraid of him, though. So he goes behind the island, goes undetected. We reset the cap right there. Uh, or we hit him at least. Oh, we take a shot from the song guy. Very bad right there. But you know what I've noticed about the Yu Yang? I think it's a little bit better than the gearing because it's really hard to hit. 
I've known, I don't know what it is. Is it because it's low in the water or is there some kind of dispersion gimmick? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. W what is the gimmick with your Yang? I don't know what it is, but I've noticed I'll, if you just shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake left and right with a rudder, man, it is so difficult to hit. And I've noticed that because so many people fired at me and I get so much potential damage. Dude caught in the open Velos just by detection. Didn't have to use radar and boom, he goes down splash three. That is the third destroyer gone down right there, ladies and gentlemen. And we are cooking right now and we got another one one more shot see look how hard that was stalingrad very accurate cruiser in the game definitely took a shot at us and miss and went bub kiss and uh we are gonna slam on the brakes hard right turn to slow our our um our ship down I, i've noticed that turning the ship and look at that another missed shot i mean he got one little shell but that the bulk of his ammo missed and look all these people are missing us and like i said uh, just this, the maneuverability on this thing is incredible for you, Yang. It can slam on the brakes. If you, again, if you want to stop the ship even further, just turn. As you are going in full reverse, turn the ship in any direction. And that, by turn definition of turning, slows and creates resistance in the water. And again, missed shot right there. Turning the ship slows you down even, even more. So very powerful. There are the deep water torpedoes. I didn't build for the reload because I didn't really use torpedoes as much, but they are still a very powerful thing, especially with the reload booster, as you can see right here come standard with the yo yang and that reload bo booster gets you another rack of torpedoes so you can literally launch 20 deep water torpedoes out there Ooh, and he goes down main good job so what are the bread and butters of the yo yang you can get switch out for smoke or radar but i prefer radar for uh, the gunboat um kind of dd hunter roll very powerful engine boost is always a must very it comes standard but again very 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 powerful getting the uh yo yang up to i believe 41 ish knots i mean very fast and nimble ship so pretty darn quick without even kind of a silent uh swift and silent it goes very quickly very swiftly for a destroyer kind of like even a little bit better than gearing i think i think it does the kind of a similar maybe one or two knots extra so a lot better that way but gearing is quick i think yo yang is just a slight edge quicker and again it is very maneuverable very slams on the brakes like i talked to about and like I said, it is so hard to hit the Yo-Yang. Gearing is also hard to hit, but for some reason, I think the Yo-Yang is just lower in the water. And here we go. Uh, there's my counterparts. Played with uh, in guns before. Uh, Woody, sorry to do this to you, buddy, but uh, really fun uh, engagement right here. Now, he's not looking at me for some darn reason. I'm not sure, but uh, he was probably preoccupied. Now his guns are turned to us. But look at the DPM, the gun reload on this thing. Very, very powerful. We're getting the fire on him as well. And again, this kind of gunboat build Yo-Yang is strong, and boom, he goes down. And we had the radar if he went undetected. So very, very strong as well. We got over 481,000 potential damage. Four kills, eliminating all the destroyers right there, right off the bat. And look, with no destroyers on their team and just the submarines, it is pretty much mopping up city right now. Now let's take a look at what these uh, torpedoes can do. Uh, again, you've already seen the power of the gunboat Yo Yang. Uh, again, gearing not necessarily a gunboat uh, main that like you can do, but with smoke in the gearing, you definitely can farm in it, uh, shoot destroyers. It, it can use the guns to kind of have an engagement, but with no heals and uh, not really significant, uh, I would say radar or gunboat power, the de gearing is just kind of an eh, average kind of gunboat. And I normally don't take gearings one on one versus other gunboat DDs. I kind of just use it as a deterrent and run away and so forth. Um, the Yang gunboat, though, I think is very powerful, very strong, um, especially when you get that combat scout going, you got the adrenaline rush kicking in, and you got the fearless brawler. It is very, very viable. So, again, the guns aren't as popular. 127 millimeters, uh, the standard, you know, gun builds, they're, they're not crazy. Uh, they're just the standard American, you know, 127 uh, millimeter guns, but whatever. I mean, they do what they have to do, but you can see they are viable when you got to go up against destroyers. Now, let's take a look at these deep water sea. Hey, then, no reaction time. These things just pop out of nowhere, and... Oh, look at all that damage. And they pack a wallop as well. You know what? We might as well try to get a Kraken right here and uh, see. And look at that. Sats Shikashima is actually going to turn his slow guns and actually aim at us. And, and look how hard it is to hit this little thing. Okay, so he's going to fire at us. Okay, there's a shot. And Bupkis. I mean, like I said, it's something about this destroyer that is so hard to hit. I don't know what it is, but uh, you guys let me know in the comments below as always. We'll, we'll look at another video uh, for the, D, the Yo Yoyang uh, DD gunboat build and but four kills. Look at that, 607 potential damage shot at us. We spotted a lot of damage as well. 65,000 just for us running around the map, just spotting naturally, okay? So, I mean, you, it seems like it's not a lot of damage, 65,000, but that's a lot still. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, so this game's pretty much over. We'll take a look at the stats at the end. Yeah, yeah, submarine goes down. Hopefully we get a Kraken. Yeah, I know. I'm not hitting him. He, I mean, I'm just playing around with him. Okay, let's take a look at the stats right here. Uh, four kills. Awesome right there. Uh, of course, number one in the team. 2,000 base XP. Very good. Cool. 
Yep, look at that. Torpedoes, 41,000 damage. I mean, very, very powerful torpedoes. Very good guns. Uh, we could see here. Good spotting damage. We take out all majority. If there were four destroyers, we took out all of them. Look at that. Look at that. One, two, three, four. Taking out all the destroyers. And I'll, again, granted, these are tier nine. So I don't know. How does it fetch against, you know, fend, fend off against tier tens? We'll see. But let's take a look at another video with Yo Yang. This time I lost, but we'll take a look at how it actually fends off. All right, here is another match, uh, Yo Yang, this time on Okinawa Domination. Uh, look at the lineup right here, Shimakaze, Hate, Fletcher, Jaeger. So again, two tier nines, two tier tens, and one radar. So, oh, and of course we have a carrier, so that's gonna be bad as well. Now, this is another good example of a video for that I have talked about before about blowout matches or just people just not poor positioning, poor communication. It's just the nature of World of Warships in the multiplayer gaming in the world today. You have submarines, you have carriers, and you have deep water torpedo destroyers like the Yo Yang. So let's get to it. All right, let's take initial positioning. I'm gonna try to take Bravo cap and then uh, converge on the Charlie. So we're gonna focus on Bravo Charlie, see if we can contest this area uh, right off the bat because it's easy, because for me, I personally think that the closer these two cap points are right, it's easy for me to bounce from here to here uh, just like as soon as I cap Bravo, jump over to Charlie and back and forth, back and forth, right? I can loiter in this area and cap both caps and take care of both caps easily for me. So right off the bat, what are we taking, uh, looking at? The RPF indicators locating that a destroyer, most likely a destroyer is in front of us out of our one or two o'clock right here. And we're going to just keep our eyes on that and make sure that uh, we uh, don't get one torped. Uh, we have in anticipation for that. And as well, we get our guns to bear and making sure that we are ready to engage. Uh, we have a carrier, which is a nuisance, always constantly trying to spot us. So we're going to be careful on that. He's going to overfly us. So we'll probably get spotted by airplanes. Yep, there it is. So I might as well turn on the uh, AA in a minute here. Uh, not after we try to shoot the Shimakaze. Again, what are the priorities? Try to eliminate all their destroyer players right off the bat. Now, you can see the loftiness of the shells. Those are like gearing guns as well. Uh, what are the names of this guns? Some kind of Mark 8 or Mark 12, I forgot what they're called. But basically, 127 millimeter guns, very slow speed, 792. They pin 21 millimeter. Standard, you know, gearing uh, secondary guns of the American battleships. So, standard guns. Uh, the. The downside, they float a lot. So now that's here's the downside. Now we're two on one here. So we are outmatched, outgunned because we have two destroyers with his support from the cruisers and battleships. So we're going to pick one one destroyer and just focus on them. Meanwhile, we radar them. So our radar lasts about 30 seconds. So let's see if we can get as much as we can off the Shimikaze. I know that he doesn't have a heal. So that anything we do right now will stick to him. So let's see if we can eliminate him, get him off the map. Only if my team would be able to shoot. But I've noticed we slammed on the brakes. We were anticipating torpedoes. So that's another good thing as a destroyer player. I had to bust out of the cap because I got reset because I got shot at and I got spotted by the carrier. So that's again, very difficult shells to shoot. I mean, see the dispersion on this thing and the loft. Again, these are just kind of that gearing mentality of lofting shells right there. And again, a lot of people shooting at us and they're, again, they're missing their shots. So again, why is Yo Yang so different than maybe a gearing or something like that? It seems like the dispersion on the shots being fired to the gearing or Yo Yang is so difficult and so hard to hit and maybe it's low in the water i know that the there was a update where they raised the yo yang a little bit out of the water making it not, not too or correct me if i'm wrong with that i do remember something happening where they had to you know make the yo yang a little bit higher because they said it was too low in the water or maybe is it still low in the water you tell me i mean it looks like it's low in the water uh it looks, seems lower in the in the water than the gearing so maybe that is reason why um you guys let me know i i'm very i'm not a i don't have a phd in this game and that it seems like you almost need one to play this damn game you know i literally just want to Pointy clicky shoot and just get and get worry about positioning and that's it. I don't want to worry about too too much in the characteristics and macro management of all the guns and the the stats and everything. I just want to play. So you notice we launched the torpedoes. They reach out to 13.5. So look at what this thing can do. And a lot of these ships did not see it unless they were spotted by the destroyer or hydro. But look at that. One, two. Uh, let's see if we get another one. Oh, ooh, we actually might get a couple of hits in the background there. The Delaware takes one right there. Look at that. How crazy is that? And, oh, do we get it? No, we get three more. My gosh. We literally got seven torpedo hit in that first salvo right there. Especially that reload booster helps out a lot by launching 20 torpedoes out there. And we're still hitting torpedoes out there way in the distance. And we activate torpedo reload booster uh, for that commander build. It gives us an extra one as well. Pretty darn or consumable reload. Yeah. So the consumable reload changes right there. So really, really awesome. We get a good reload on for the torpedoes. So now we're going back to the cap. Again, this is why I hate carriers because it doesn't allow you to do your job. Oh, my entire team. I just looked up the mini map. My entire team 
at Charlie Cap literally disintegrated. I have no idea where anybody's at. I'm the last guy over here defending. And this is pretty much going to be a boring match right here. And this is why they're... Look at the blowout matches. Okay, now let's take a look at positioning right here. Not only are we getting Cap right here, enjoy while me getting shot at. I mean, Yo Yang is awesome for this, guys. I, it just seems better than the gearing to take for dodging. I mean, look at all these shots. I'm doing the shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake here. Shooting left, right. I'm getting, getting pomp, constantly perma spotted by the carrier. We're getting hit a little bit, but not we're not taking too, too bad of damages. See, like it seems like the shells, when they try to hit us, they just don't you get deflected or don't do as much damage. We are up to 483 potential right there. And thank you for the carrier for somewhat of a, you know, uh, cap. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, anti-aircraft defense zone over us. All right. Now that I've gotten a breath here. Um, okay, look at the minimap. Look at this positioning. Wisconsin, Brest, Venezia, way in the back here. Maine, I have no idea what you're doing. Sitting in the back as a heavy battleship. Meanwhile, they're taking Alpha. Again, the C1 destroyer can literally hold off an entire flank. Me by myself over here at Charlie Bravo, what am I supposed to do? I'm literally just there to just cover the carrier. Don't let them just roll over us. And let me just watch. Now, look at that. Look, where, look at the enemy composition here. They lost one destroyer. And we've lost five. Now, how do you think the game is going to turn out now? I mean, this is essentially that happened the last few minutes right there. And you've already kind of know what's going to happen to the game uh, of just, you know, just sheer numbers and statistics, basically, of where this is going to go. I mean, I feel like the problem, like my last podcast talked about, is the game relies too, too much on one particular function of a class of ship. For example, if they lose, um, if we lose a destroyer and the destroyer is literally wiped out on one side of the map, that there goes the game for that side of the map. I mean, it literally seems like the battleships just go dumb and just don't know what to do without a destroyer. It just seems like game's over. I have no spotting. I have no carry. Uh, just, man, I'm getting a lot of torpedo hits right there. I have no... I mean, just look at me, what I'm doing. I'm holding literally an entire flank with torpedo hits. Just be, And that, that, that puts a fear in the sense of these cruisers and battleship players are like, Holy crap, there's something out here torping us. Let's get the hell out of here. And that's it seems that is the case because one class is so impactful and functional in the game that it's just devastating for a flank. The other aspect is if you lose battleships. Now look, whether the battleship is destroyed or they take themselves out of the game by just running away, it, it just seems like that that right there is alone a function. If you don't have any battleships, I mean, if they're non-existent in the game, but they're in the game, I mean, the guy, look, look at this main. He's literally driving away. I have no, I mean, the game's over here, buddy. Why are you driving away? Not dogging the player, just the, the meta. The meta today supports driving away and saving your ship, and let's not engage. By doing so, what's the point, you know? Now, that means that main is literally worthless and useless. He's not going to cap. He's probably not going to go so bot. He's just going to go get shot at, and he's just a pinata at this point, right? So pinata's head in the back. I'm literally trying to fend off Charlie and Bravo. So look at my role as a destroyer player. I have to hold off the enemy. I have to go cap Charlie. I have to go spot the ships where they're at. I have to eliminate the destroyer player. I literally have to cover the midway as well because I don't want anybody to roll all over him. But he's being attacked by the carrier. They're having their own little game over there. I hate carriers. They just do their own thing. I used to like them. Now they're boring. I think this is anti-ship warfare. That's another uh, topic of discussion right there. So the carriers are off on their own, playing their own game. Main finally gets torped by a submarine. Again, oh, wow, a submarine. Now I know why he was running away. One little submarine was able to literally wipe an entire um, battleship off the map and keep him literally non-existent. But the, car the submarine didn't do anything either. He didn't really cap. He didn't spot. He didn't do anything other than just hunt down a battleship. Wow, fun and engaged, right? All right, look at the power of these torpedoes right here. So I can launch right there. I hit the reload booster, try to kill this Delaware so that I can somewhat save this game. Look at that. This game literally could have been turned around. And look, we have six ships to their nine. So looks like a blowout game, right? But never underestimated in World of Warships right here. So I can't spot, or I'm sorry, I can't cap Charlie right now. I'm being spotted. But man, the power of the, 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 the Yu Yang right here, I can take on a destroyer if I need to with the guns. The deep water torpedoes are great for these engagements with the carrier. Uh, I'm sorry, with the battleships or cruisers. Now, the problem me... Oh, now we took out... The Vanessa took out the Fletcher. Way to go there. Now, the problem here is I don't have enough firepower to take uh, off the Delaware. I don't smoke, so I can't engage and shoot. Ooh, look at all those. That damage right there. Powerful right there. Ohio takes out our submarine. Wisconsin takes out Emelman. So their carrier's down. All we have is uh, our carrier. And we're slowly wither uh, withering away their, sh their, um, their team right there. Look at the power of what I can do. Just me alone. Right over here is keeping Charlie and Bravo uh, uh, contested right here. So now we have their airplanes coming to spot me. So Delaware has spotting for himself. Let's see how well this uh, bomber can do. Ooh, Azuma gets taken out by Wisconsin. Very good there. 
All right, and we bomb. Ah, oh, ouch. Okay, so again, very hard for the airplanes to take us out. So we uh, hopefully go undetected. And Bupkis again. Look at that. A lot of shots missed. A lot of bombs. But Yo Yang is very, very good at dodging. I mean, we're up to eight hundred one thousand potential damage right there. We're taking a lot of ordnance shots. Thirteen torpedo hits. A lot of airplane shot down. And we're capping Charlie. So look at the power of one little destroyer can do on one flank. But again. Look at our team. I mean, our team literally doesn't have anybody, no battleships anymore. So now they have the advantage. Submarines, destroyers, battleships, cruisers, everything possible. Now they have a carrier to perma spot me. So here I am. I'm going to try to dodge as best I can. As a good destroyer player should do, I should cap. I should hopefully kill the uh, airplanes here and get keep them distracted. Emmelman, very, very powerful. I remember when Emmelman first came out, it was kind of like the uh, Citadel King for cruisers. I think their rockets could pen uh, like Citadel cruisers. Pretty credible. All right, so what can I do here? Nothing other than activate uh, the uh, any aircraft at the very last minute. I'm going to slam on the brakes or turn hardware left right here and hopefully dodge those uh, skip bombers right there. Finally, I cap Charlie. Hopefully, we get Alpha Cap right there. We lose our carrier to a submarine. Um, two toxic things fighting each other. Okay, go have at it and go do your own thing. I mean, we're getting two. Look at the damage I'm doing. 208,000 damage right there. Holy cow. And we haven't even added the airplane damage I'm doing. I mean, I have crappy AA, by the way, okay? Yu Yang is not an AA platform, but I'm doing 34,000 damage. I mean, literally, I've, I've taken off two destroyers maybe with that amount of damage for airplanes. 35,000 potential now. 878 of ordnance shot at me, and I'm still alive. Again, Yo Yang, I think, is a little bit better than the gearing for the fact that it is hard to shoot and hit. Let me know again why that is. Uh, I've still got my guns, still got the torpedoes, 2.6 reload on the guns. Uh, I've still got my radar if I need it. I uh, got the engine boost. So the engine boost is, got, is keeping me pretty darn swift. So I'm going to go cap Bravo now. Again, I'm spotting the rune, and hopefully I can go and attack the Hayate. And, man, I'm doing a, I'm doing the buttload of the work here. Two ships to their five. Look, look at that. We are literally able to wither them down to five ships. So very, very powerful right here. Venezia is a strong cruiser as well. I literally call it the anti-destroyer ship because 15 sap shells or uh, 15 guns uh, shooting sap shells into our broadside just will delete you off the map. So what is my thinking right here? Well, I'm going to go cap Bravo and keep the Hayate very good there on Venezia on the rear. Look at that. We're getting it down to four ships now. If we can eliminate maybe one more ship, we can stay in this game. Let's see here. Hayate is almost full health, so we might lose that engagement because his guns are pretty darn strong. Uh, I think Hayate, I did a review on it. Uh, very, very powerful, uh, kind of a Shimikaze with guns kind of mentality, but uh, we're talking about the Yoyang here. YY is in the cap now. We are in. It takes us a minute to cap this spot, so we'll see if we can hold this off. Meanwhile, Venezia is going to take on an Ohio while being shot up by the Delaware, so not a fair match right there. It's a three-on-one, and with Hayate, we keep the RPF indicator in front of us at our 11 o'clock. We know where the Hayate is at, so we got our radar ready in case he smokes up. I don't think I'll win this engagement with 9,000 health. Let's see how we're going to do this right here. All right. So we're going to, again, as a good destroyer player, learning how we're going to slowly move forward, continuously spotting the Delaware, making sure Hayate is still within our reach here. We have him on RPF. I know he's somewhere around this island. I have to cap it off. So far, he's not contesting the cap, uh, interesting enough. I have no idea where their submarine is. I bet he's up here somewhere because that was what he uh, torped the main. Ohio takes down Venezia. We are the last one. Ooh, we can get a solo war here if we can. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to get spotted by another airplane. Wow, yay. Okay, we finally cap. I did literally a majority of the work on Bravo Charlie. I literally was by myself able to <laughs> cap Charlie Bravo. Oh, and there's a submarine. So we're going to go get the submarine, a battleship, airplanes, and another destroyer. Very cool fare, right? So what are we going to go for here? Let's see. We're perma-spotted right now. There's nothing we can do. Oh, let's shoot. Well, let's shoot the Gato. You know what? Uh, let's look at the guns. Guns reload. 2.3 now. Very, very good right there. I should have gotten Combat Scout. I don't know why I did no amount of damage in spotting it. We take a torpedo. Unfortunate. That was my bad. I just not realized that. I don't have damage con. Well, at least I can take somebody down with me, right? Come on, baby. Get that submarine. Ah, nothing satisfying than getting the submarine. All right, here we go. He's got his other set of torpedoes that are homing, by the way. There is nothing I can do about this other than aim at it and slowly turn back to the right. There it is. We throw out the torpedoes right there. Great job on us. Okay, now we got the radar. He is somewhere in that smoke. Come on, where is he? Oh, he's around the island. Okay, so we got the Hayate located. We are about to go undetected right there, but unfortunately, I don't know why I didn't think about that. Yeah, I didn't get the damage con and I didn't uh, put out the flood there. He caught me on the flood. Good game there overall. Uh, 220,000 damage, 1.1 million spotting. Holy crap. Or 1.1 million potential, I'm sorry. 
Confederate. We did a lot of damage, okay? And holy cow, high caliber. 220,000. I don't even think I've gotten gearing up to 220,000. 13 torpedo hits, shooting in 20 airplanes. Uh, we've got a fire flood, a lot of floodings there. Think, and we captured two spots. We held off Bravo Charlie. And yes, of course, we're number one on the team again. And man, dude, your Yang is powerful. I think it's more powerful than the gearing. Let me know what you think about that. Look at that. Torpedoes, 168,000 damage just on torpedoes alone. And then we got the guns, we got the fires, we had the floodings, a lot of AA damage. Look at 38,000. I literally killed two destroyers worth of airplanes. Holy crap. That is wild. Okay. We survived the majority of the match. Potential spotting, or sorry, we took 1.1 million potential and we spotted 6,000. Not as much spotting as I would like to uh, hope for. I need the combat scout. I need to get more spotting, get going. But anyways, anyways that is Yo Yang. What do you guys think of your Yang? Do you think it's a powerful gunboat, DD? Is it a cheap version of a small one? I mean, if you can't get a small one, well, what about your Yang? Radar, destroyer, hunter, killer? Uh, it doesn't have heels. That's the downside. But it does ha pack a wallop, and it's hard to hit. That's the biggest one right there. So, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support, as always. At 4,000 subs, do another premium giveaway. And can't thank you guys enough. Spread this around. Hopefully, we get more discussion, and we'll do another video uh, about uh, how destroyer gameplay is the dominating factor in the game of uh, World of Warship. So, as always, hope you guys are doing well. If you see me out there, say hi. And, as always, be safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.